Hi guys. Let's see what is the training manual that according to Salas must be on board. There are two training manuals on board. LSA training manual regarding safety and life-saving appliances and FFE training manual regarding fire equipment and fire fighting techniques. Let's start from LSA manual. The information contained in the training manual is required to be ship specific. Thus, there must be details of all actual equipment on board the vessel. Training manuals are usually on the third officer. Therefore, as a third officer, it is your responsibility to keep this manual up to date. The matter is, that you can meet different kinds of training manuals on board, such as shipyard's training manual or subcontractors or company's training manuals. Or all of them together, that should be avoided because the procedure for different types of equipment that are not on the ship can be included. That is one of issue by PSC. We have shipyard's training manual here, since it's originally designed for a specific ship. So let's check out what we can find here. So, this manual complies with the requirements of Salas Chapter 3, Regulation 35, Training Manual and Onboard Training Aids. There you can read which information must be included. All crew members should read this training manual. A readership log is usually kept where each crew member acknowledges familiarization with the manual with his or her signature. Third officer can use this manual as reference when doing familiarization procedure for newcomers. The copies of training manuals should be provided in each mess room and recreation room. Here we can see the content of training manual, all as per Salas Chapter 3 Regulation 35. Okay, Chapter 1. Donning life jackets, immersion suits and life buoys. Life jackets. Here you can see manufacturer and type of life jacket. Also total quantity of them on board and their location. If guys something has changed, such as you received new life jackets of a different manufacturer and type, it should be noted here. So usually life jackets are located in each cabin, navigation bridge, engine control room, upper deck forward, hospital. Donning instruction are shown on the separate page. Usually it's a poster from the manufacturer. A modern life jacket is designed to keep a fully clothed person afloat. Turn an unconscious person onto his or her back with head and mouth clear of the surface of the water. Enable the wearer to jump from a height of at least 4.5 meters into the water without injury and without dislodging or damaging the life jacket. So guys, as you see sometimes there are some misprints and mistakes, especially in Asian publications that you also have to take into account. Always check full information in the LSA code in Salas, because the training manual intends to give the most important information, and here are no complete description of the requirements. So let's continue. It is essential to don a life jacket before abandoning ship. It is impossible to put one on once in the water. If you have to jump into the water, hold life jacket, Block off nose and mouth, kept feet together, check below to ensure there are no obstructions, jump feet first, look straight ahead. Do not jump direct into boats or on top of rafts. Immersion suits. The number and type of suits are also listed here. Some requirements for immersion suits are also listed here. You should know whether your immersion suit is made of material with built-in insulation or you should wear warm clothing with it. Also whether your immersion suit has buoyancy and is designed to be worn without a life jacket or it is to be worn in conjunction with a life jacket. Usually it is marked with such instruction. Life buzz. Here must be indicated or you have to indicate the number of life buoys on board. The number of life buoys depends on length and purpose of the ship. The life buoys are placed in such a way that they are easily accessible on both sides of the ship. 
the lifeboats must be ready for being rapidly cast off. They must be no means be permanent fastened. The lifeboats have to be equipped with reflection tapes and the name and port of registry of the ship shall be marked on each lifeboat in legible block letters. Lifeboat Attachments At least one lifeboat on each side must be equipped with a buoyant lifeline completing with a braking strength of not less than 5 kN. Here indicate how many there are on your ship. At least on half of the number of lifeboats must be provided with self-igniting light giving a constant or flashing light for a period of at least two hours. At least two of the lifeboats provided with self-igniting lights also have to be provided with a self-activating smoke signal emitting a smoke of distinctly visible color for a period of at least 15 minutes. It must be easy to release these lifeboats from the navigating bridge. Most ships have a combined light and smoke buoy, a so-called man-overboard buoy. The lifeboats with the above attachments must be distributed equally on both sides of the ship. The use of lifeboats. If man overboard. Shout. Man overboard. Starboard. Port side. Throw out a lifeboat at once and give the alarm to the bridge. There is a hope that the man overboard will get hold of the lifeboat, and at the same time the man overboard place has been marked and this facilitated the search. Throw several lifeboats if necessary. At key or at anchor. A lifeboat with a line must always be ready near the gangway. When embarking or disembarking the pilot. A lifeboat with a light must be ready near the pilot's ladder. Here should be attached donning instruction of light jackets and immersion suits as per each maker and details of lifeboats. Let's see quickly one more chapter. Chapter 2. Muster at the Assigned Stations. Here you can find or have to specify real signals for various onboard emergencies, such as fire on board, abandoned ship, spillage of cargo, collision, grounding, man overboard. The general emergency signal usually is seven or more short blasts followed by one long blast on the ship's whistle. The man overboard signal is usually three long blasts. Whichever of the above signals are given all personnel should proceed immediately to their allotted muster stations that are shown in the muster list. Here are indicated the locations of muster lists. It is usually all decks, bridge and engine control room. Also here is indicated the deck where the lifeboats are located. Here also should be attached a copy of muster list. Okay guys, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you in the next part.